and all out. And how we've been starting these series is kind of just by um, answering a question. And so I've got another question for you to think about and talk about with your neighbors. And this one seems pretty simple, but I think there's a lot of answers to this. What does it mean to serve someone? What does it mean to serve someone? Talk about it with your neighbors. If you are not next to a neighbor and you're like, oh, I don't know, turn around, move, find someone to talk with. You got about one minute. What does it mean to serve someone? What does it mean to serve someone? Uh, to like do something that they want you to do. Yeah, you know, okay, doing something that they want. Something beneficial to help them, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. What else? What'd you say? Yeah, yeah. It, sometimes we think of serving, we think like this big, huge thing, but it's like small things too. Um, all of that is considered serving. What else? Anything else? I think kind of, uh, for me, it, it means so many different things and it looks so many different ways. But for how I'm kind of using it for, for this uh, lesson, it's, it's to express love through action. It doesn't have to be a big amount or big action. It can be a small, it can be anything in between, but it's expressing love through action. It's helping someone, it's doing something beneficial, which in itself is expressing love through action. And I think that's what it means to serve someone. We're gonna kind of process this and talk about this in a second, but I want us to kind of go over what it means to be all up and all out. We've got a scripture we're all gonna read, it's gonna be up there in three, two, one. Um, and we're going to read it together on me. Are y'all ready? Three, two, one. Imitate God, therefore, in everything you do, because you are his dear children. Live a life filled with love, following the example of Christ. So this scripture we've used and talked about a lot, but it says kind of two things. It's saying imitate God, and to imitate someone, we play Simon Says to help us like, know what this is, or we play Lynn and says, but to do good in a game like that, to copy someone, to imitate them, we have to focus on them. If we are distracted, then we're not imitating. So we have to focus on God, which is all up. But the scripture also says we have to live a life filled with love and do what Christ did, serve and love others, all out. And what we're kind of saying as Christians we have an upward focus on God, but we have an outward direction of our life. The things we do are not inward focused. They're not for us. We don't live a selfish life. As Christians, we should have an upward focus on God and an outward focus or an outward direction in our life. And that's really, really hard. People from the beginning of time, including right now, we're always trying to find ways and loopholes out of, get of, out, of getting, uh, out of doing what is right. For example, if your parent says, clean your room, 
You might say, well, I uh, have something else to do. I have homework to do, but really you don't have that much homework. You could clean your room and do your homework, but you try to find a way to get out of it. Or like me growing up, I always looked for ways if, if I had to like mow the lawn or if I had to help with the kitchen, I would be like, okay, I'll help with the kitchen if I can get out of cleaning the bathroom, right? I would try to trade off or get my brother to help me or like, Sometimes like, I'd be like, hey, I'll, I'll, I'll pay you 10 bucks this week to mow the lawn. I'd tell my brother that. And like stuff like that, we try to get out of doing what we have to do sometimes. Or if you've done homework and you did like half of it, you tell your teacher, like, oh, I, I uh, was so busy last night, I didn't have time to do the rest, right? Sometimes we're making excuses or trying to get out of things. And that has been happening for forever. And it happens in the Bible. People heard Jesus' teachings, heard what they had to do, the, the, the standard of focusing on God and serving and loving others, an outward direction. And people like could kind of get behind like the first part, they think. They're like, okay, I can focus on God. But like when I live, what I do, I'm going to decide that. When I do something, it's going to help me. And so they tried to find ways to get out of what was doing right, to get out of what was right. So they would come to Jesus, right? Just like we come to our parents or our teachers or our youth pastors with some way, some loophole, some question to try to get us from doing what's right. And that's exactly what happened to Jesus all the time. People would come to him and say like, what about this, Jesus? And he always had an answer. And in our story tonight, we're going to see that that's the case. Our story comes from Luke chapter 10 verses 25 through 37. This is really good stuff, so everybody listen up. One day, an expert in religious law stood up to test Jesus by asking him this question. Teacher, what should I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus replied, what does the law of Moses say? How do you read it? The man answered, you must love God the Lord with or you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength, and all your mind. You must be all up. You must be focused on God. And love your neighbor as yourself. You must have an outward direction, right? That's what he's saying is you must serve and love other people. Right, Jesus told him. Do this and you will live. The man wanted to justify his actions, so he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Jesus replied with a story. I'm going to pause there for just a second. I want to recap what is happening. This guy comes to Jesus. He says, hey, how do you receive eternal life? Or how do we like get the rewards of following you? If I'm following you, Jesus, how do I get the good stuff? That's what he's saying. And Jesus says, well, what do you read in the Bible? What does the Bible say about following me? And the guy says, okay, okay. You've got to love God with everything you have. And he says, you've got to love your neighbor. And Jesus is like, yeah, go and do that. And everything else is going to take care of itself. It's simple, easy. Love God with everything and love your neighbor, right? It's very simple. Jesus is like, yes, go and do that. We're all done. Conversation over. But the guy's not done. And this is what happens, is he's trying to justify not helping someone out. He's trying to justify and figure out, well, like, who's my neighbor, Jesus? Because if I only have to love my neighbor, is that like one house over, or two houses over, or three, or, okay, Jesus, I'll love, like, my whole, like, neighborhood, but beyond that, no way, right? Because they're not my neighbor. And he's trying to get out of doing what the right thing is. And Jesus tells him this story. A Jewish man was traveling from Jerusalem down to Jericho, and he was attacked by bandits. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him up, and left him half dead beside the road. By chance, a priest came along, but when he saw the man lying there, he crossed to the other side of the road and passed him by. A temple assistant walked over and looked at him lying there, but he also passed by on the other side. Then a despised Samaritan 
came along, and when he saw the man, he felt compassion for him. Going over to him, the Samaritan soothed his wounds with olive oil and wine and bandaged them. Then he put the man on his own donkey and took him to an inn where he, could be take, or where he took care of him. The next day, he handed the innkeeper two silver coins, telling him, Take care of this man. If his bill runs higher than this, I'll pay you the next time I'm here. Now, which of these three would you say was a neighbor to the man who, attacked, who was attacked by the bandits, Jesus asked. The man replied, the one who showed him mercy. Then Jesus said, yes, now go and do the same. So this cool stuff's happening in this story. And we're going to get to that in a second. But I want to focus on what this guy is asking. He's saying, who is my neighbor? And what he's really saying is not just like, okay, do I just have to love the person next door to me? What he's really getting at, and what we get at so often when we say like, do I have to do the right thing? Do I have to help this person? Do I have to go sit by this person? Do I need to check on this person? Do I need to be nice to this person? What we're really saying how many people do I really have to love, Jesus? Like, what kind of people do I have to love, Jesus? Jesus, do I have to love people who are different than me? I mean, what if they look different than me, Jesus? Do I have to love them? What if they talk differently than me, Jesus? What if they have a different belief than me, Jesus? What if they're mean to me? What if they make fun of me? Like, do I have to love those people? Do I have to serve those people? What if they're not even, like, Christian? Do I have, do I have to love those people? That's what we're really saying. That's what this guy was saying. And so often we're doing the same thing of like, okay, I'll love some people, but like not all people. And Jesus tells this story to show something so much deeper than what that guy is asking. He, he tells him this story about a man who is beaten, who's hurt, who's left dying on the side of the road. And as he's telling this story, he says, and a priest comes walking by. And everybody's like, oh, good. Woo! The priest is here. He follows God. He's going to do the right thing. He's going to help that person. That person needs help, right? Well, the priest, he follows God. He's going to help the person, right? And Jesus goes and he's like, and he goes to the other side of the road. And he walks by. Doesn't look at him, doesn't help him, doesn't pray for him, doesn't does nothing. And the, and the crowd listening to Jesus is like, what? Just like we are. Like, like that doesn't make sense. But then the next character shows up, and it's like the temple assistant. And they're like, okay, the priest wasn't being a good example, but the temple assistant, right? He's going to be able to help out. The youth pastor, surely the youth pastor is going to stop and help that person. Surely the person who goes to church every single Sunday is going to help that person. Surely the person who says they're following God is going to stop and help the person dying on the side of the road, right? And the crowd's like, yeah, that's going to be the hero in the story. And then it's like, wait, that person, the temple assistant, does the same thing as the priest. They walk across the street. They walk on the other side. They ignore them. And now the crowd's just confused, like, okay, Jesus, what is going on? And then he tells them a, a Samaritan. And the thing about Samaritans, where they were the enemies of the Jews, Jews looked down and said, you are less than me because of your ethnicity. You are less than me because my race is pure and yours is not. You are less than me because of this. 
And that Samaritan, and, and the whole crowd is like, oh no, is that Samaritan going to hurt this guy? Is he going to rob him more? Like, what's going to happen? The Samaritan comes, and he sees the guy hurting on the side of the street. The same guy the priest walked by. The same guy that, that the Levi, the, the temple assistant, walks by. And the Samaritan, the one despised by the Jews, the ones that everybody in the crowd would have said, boo! sees the man dying on the side of the road. And did you catch what he had? Compassion. He has compassion, and he's filled with it. And that compassion isn't like lip service. He's not saying like, oh, I love you, but I won't help you. He's so filled with compassion that he goes to work helping that person. He gets out his olive oil, and he gets out his wine, and he's like using it to like clean his wounds, to clean him up, to do whatever he can to help this person. He like gives him a coat. He puts him on his donkey. He goes to a different town. He puts him in an inn, and he like starts to take care of him. He makes sure he's okay. He gets him food and water and, and, and medical supplies. He gets him whatever he needs. And then the next day, he doesn't just do that. Did you catch what he did the next day? Next day, he goes up to the innkeeper. He pays the innkeeper ahead of time, and he says, look, Whatever this person needs, put it on my bill, and I'll come back and pay more if that's the case. And then he goes back to the, the expert of the law who's questioning Jesus after telling this story. He's like, hey, who's the neighbor here? Who's the person who loved the person like a neighbor? Who was a neighbor to the Jewish man who was beaten and hurt? Was it the priest? Was it the temple assistant? No. He can't even say. Here's the thing, how much they dislike Samaritans. He can't even say the Samaritan. He says the one who showed mercy. Just like, yeah, that's who you have to love. Everybody. And the man goes away. This story tells us so much about being a Christian. Like I said, being a Christian, we have an upward focus on God. And when we do that, God calls us to go out into the world and serve and love people. And the thing is, people can't really dispute this. When you say, what does a Christian life look like from the Bible? You can't argue that it's not a service or, or a life of service, a life of love, a life of compassion. People don't say like, well, I'm not going to do those things, but I'm going to follow God. People say they're going to do those things. People really say it, and they mean it. They say, I'm going to do those things. But the way we so often live as Christians is different. Because we're not saying those things aren't good or what we're called to. But what we are saying is, I'm only going to love, serve and have compassion towards other people I want to. I'm going to choose who my neighbor is, Jesus, not you. So often as Christians, we judge people. We say, I'm going to love you and have compassion on you if you act the way that I want, to, want you to. I'll love and serve you if you vote exactly the way I want you to vote. If you think the same way that I think, I'll love and serve and have compassion with you. If you believe the same things I believe, I will love and serve you and have compassion on you. If you look, talk, act like me, I'll love, serve, and have compassion on you. But if you're outside those boundaries... No way, you're not my neighbor. And Jesus is ad addressing those very people. So many Christians in our country, we live and act like that. And that is completely opposite. Do y'all see that? That's completely opposite than what Jesus is saying right here. You know, you know one of my favorite craziest things Jesus says? Love your enemies. We are called to love, serve, and have comp compassion on people who don't like us, on people who disagree, people who don't follow our religion, people who are different, who, who think we shouldn't do what we do, whatever. 
There is no excuse we can make for not loving and serving and having compassion on people. We are called to live an outward life. To love all people, period. We cannot make excuses about why we can't do this or that, or we can't love this person because, like in the story, it just, it should tear you up, right? The priest, maybe that priest is like a pastor, maybe it's a Christian, maybe it's one of you all in your schools, and you see someone hurting, you see someone being picked on, you see someone being bullied or sitting alone or going through something hard. And how often do we just walk by? Then another person does it. But if we're going to be a neighbor, if we're going to love our neighbors, we got to see people and have compassion. Our job as Christians, hear me out, our job as Christians isn't to change people. We don't get to control anyone. Instead, it's to love people. It's to say, look, I know this guy named Jesus, and Jesus loves me so much. It's changed me. And he loves you that much too. And I'm going to show you that love through action, which is what we call serve. I'm going to serve you in some way, big, small, in between. I am going to love you through my action. I'm not going to just talk about it. I'm not going to just say it. But instead, I'm going to show you God's love. And I'm going to show you in an amazing, incredible way by serving other people. So, I'm going to close with this question. Um, and then I'm going to pray. And then we are going to uh, kind of go to our small groups and have a little discussion about serving other people, okay? Cool. So here's this question I kind of want you to process. Who is someone you know you need to serve but you haven't been serving? Who is someone you know you need to serve but you haven't been serving? You've been making excuses. You've been coming up with reasons why you can't or you shouldn't. Or, or it won't work, or it won't matter, or this or that. Who is someone you need to serve, but you haven't been serving? Process that, and then kind of pray about that as we transition, okay? Dear God, first and foremost, we want to thank you that you love us no matter what. Whatever we've been, wherever we've been, no matter what somebody has said about us or done to us, or no matter what we've done, you love us unconditionally, and nothing can change that, God. And we say thank you for your love. Help us to know that love. Help us to focus on that love. Help us to be filled by that love. God, let that love be so full in us that we have an outward direction in our life, that we love and serve and have compassion on people around us. Let us not choose uh, who, and let us not make excuses, God, but let us love people the same way you do. We pray this in your holy name. Amen. Okay, so how we're going to do this, uh, middle school boys, you're going to, someone's going to grab, well, Connor already has your paper. You're going to head back with Connor, go to your small group. When you are done, what time is it? Okay, when you're done, hang out. You can go outside if you want, or you can stay in your group because it's cold and dark outside. Uh, girls, you will be in here with Christina. She's got your papers. High school.